All right, with Hashem's help, we will learn today Yevamas Daflametes. Again, to acknowledge that Kimitzi and Teitzay Seira, that we have the schus to be here in Yerushalayim. And again, to thank uh, Shula's library, that's Rabbi Yossi and Hinda Swerdlov, for affording us this beautiful location for our Shiurim to continue here in Yerushalayim. We left off Daflamet Ches Amit Beis second to last line on Baya Amr. And to make a quick recap, in the Mishnah and Daflamet Ches, we had the Mishnah discussing the din of a Shemeres Yavim. So Reuven married Rachel, Reuven passed away, Rachel is a widow, there's a brother Shimon, Shimon is planning to do Yibum uh, or Chalitza. Before he did Yibum or Chalitza, she, the widow, was called a Shemeres Yavim, and she inherited belongings, and as we explained in last year, Lavdafka, someone gave her her gift, she found something that was lost, and the question is, who owns it? And as we learned in, at the end of Daflam et Chesam et Beis, that in the beginning of the Mishnah, firstly, Beishamai and Beisilol both said that she has the full right to sell it, and then the Mishnah said that if she died, Beishamai holds that her Yarshim and Shimon's Yarshim equally divide those belongings. We're speaking here about Nichse Meloig, as we explained in the previous year, and the question is, there's a contradiction. In the Reish of the Mishnah, Beishamai says she has the right to sell it, which implies it's hers, and then the Mishnah says that if she dies, Beishamai holds, her relatives don't fully keep it, so it's a contradiction. So we had the answer of Ula, and we had the answer of Rabba, and now we are up to Abaya's answer. So Abaya Omer says, Abaya, that Teresha Shemeris Yovim, that has the right to sell her belongings, that she only had possession of these belongings when she became a widow already. Which means that the deceased husband, Reuven, never had any connection to those properties. However, Seifam, whereby Shammai holds that at least the uh, inheritors of Shimon have some half of rights over her belongings, is the Nafluluk Shehitachas the Baal. It's speaking about a case that she inherited these belongings when she was married to Reuven. That means that Reuven, while she was married to him, had control over these Nechsem Loik. And as we explained in the beginning, in Daflam Ches, Ula's opinion, that a Shemeris Yavam goes down one level. That means the connection of Zika is one level less than the connection of marriage. And therefore, Daflam Ches on the top, because of Rabaya, by a whole, that the Silul's opinion is that even while they were married, Yodoi Ki Yodo, that in Nixem Meloig, the husband's rights to the fruit and her ownership of the property itself make them equals and if they are equal when they are married then think about it then what were to happen if if he dies so we said Zika is one level less so if it's one level less that would mean that her power now is greater than Shimon's power that is the opinion of Basil which is why Basil says that if she dies her and her her relatives inherit all of the Nechzim Lake. However, Beishamai holds that during the marriage, it's not Yodoi Kiyodoi equal. During the marriage, the owner owns more. The husband owns more than the wife. Which means that when there's a death, now the Zika, which is one level less, makes him and her equal. Which is why the Mishnah says that if she dies, both of the Yarshim inherited Yachloiku. I and the Reisha Beishamai says that Shemer Yavim has the right to sell the belongings, yeah, because that's speaking about a case that it did not come into her possession while she was married to her first husband. So now it's fully hers. Again, the question on Abaya really at the end will be the same question we had on Daflam et Ches on Ula. In other words, if the difference between the Reisha and the Seifa has to do with when she, got, she took possession of these properties, was it when the husband was alive, was it after the husband was alive, then the din of the Seifa has nothing to do with her dying. The din of the Seifa has to do with the fact that since the husband belonged, owned it while he was still living, and according to Bishamai, even then he was only like a 50% owner, so now that the husband dies, Zika is one level less, so even less, Shimon has less connection to it than her, she gets to keep it. 
her Yarshim keep it. But really, it has nothing to do with her dying, and we'll get to that soon. So Amalei Rava, Rava first challenges Abaye, and he tells Abaye, he did not look, she hitachas the Baal, that if the ratio of the Mishnah speaking about a case, that she had possession to these belongings while she was with her husband. The Kuli Alma Loi Pligi, everyone would agree that the Yodoi Adifa Miyoda, which means even Basil would have to hold that while she is married, even though the Nechsim Loig essentially belonged to her, since Hashem gave the husband all of the right of the user fruit, that he is considered more in possession than her. And therefore, even Basil should have been Maida, that if he dies, true Zika goes down one level. One level would mean that now the Shimon, right, the Yavam, should have 50% of ownership. And therefore, when she dies, they should divide those belongings 50-50. But Basil says she gets to keep it fully. Ella, therefore, Rav says, that even in both cases, both the Resha and the Seifa, are speaking about properties that came into her possession after the Uven died. I, going back the stira between the Reisha and the Seifa in Beisham, right? So here, Rava answers, Reisha deloi ovad ba maimer. The Reisha speaking about a Shemeris Yavam, that Shimon did not even do maimer to her, which is why Basilel and Beisham both agree she has full rights to sell those belongings, to do dealings, to give it as a gift. However, Seifa, where we have the machlikas of Beishamay and Beisilel, is the Ovid Bamaimar. Shimon already did the pre Yibum rabbinic, rabbinic according to Beisilel, and Midoi Rais according to Beishamay, Maimar. And Vikasova, Rava, and Rava holds that Maimar, Le Beishamay, Oise Vadai Arusa, it makes her, it's Maimar, according to Beishamay, is a Doi Rais Adika engagement. And true, it doesn't connect her to Shimon the way a man and wife are connected through Nesuyim, but it connects them the way a husband and a wife are connected through a Doyeraisa engagement, Arusim, Erusim, Kedushim. And it's considered, therefore, like a Suffolk Nesuya. And explaining the meaning, Vadai Arusa, what does Rava mean that according to Bishamai, she's considered a Vadai engaged woman to Shimon, to the Yavam? That means Litchais Bitsara. She's a Vadai Arusa, that if Reuven had two wives, and as we know that if two wives fall from one bias, the mitzvah of Yibum or Chalitza is only with one of them. So what does Maimir accomplish fully? We had this before, according to Beishamai, that if Shimon chooses to do Maimer with Rachel, if there was a co-wife Miriam, Miriam is out. However, the Suffolk Nusuya, Suffolk Nusuya means she's not considered fully married when it comes to Lachalik ben which is why Beishamai holds 50-50, that if she dies, some of her Yarshim keep it, some of Shimon's Yarshim keep it. However, Beisilol holds that Maimer is not even considered an Arusa. And therefore, just like before she got Maimer, Beishamay and Beisilol says she has the right to sell her belongings, therefore also, even though Maimer was done, it's still fully hers. And if it's fully hers, if she dies, Beisilol says, the Nechsim Meloig goes fully to her relatives. Why does Rebbe have to include, have to describe this Machlokis? Based on Mimer versus Abaye, who doesn't? Because the question against Abaye will be, why does she have to die? We'll get to that in a moment. Itmer Mishmei de Rabbi Lazar Kavasi de Rava, and the Itmer Mishmei de Rabbi Yosef Rab Chanina like Abaye. You know, it's both Rabbi Lazar, the Amaira, and Rabbi Yosef Rab Chanina, the Amaira. They lived generations before Abaye and Rava. So we're not making it a contingent Ketanoi, but this is also something common in the Gemara that the later Amairaim. The later Amaraim, Abai and Rava, they actually, they were machaven to the same explanation that was given both by Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Yosi. So now the Gemara says, one second, Rabbi Yosi and Rabbi Hanina is the one that's saying like Abaya. Says the Gemara, Mi Amar Lazar Haki, Yivamar Rabbi Lazar, Maimer Lebe Shamai. That Rabbi Lazar holds that even according to Beishamai, even according to Beishamai, all Maimer does is that Maimer disconnects the co-wife from the Yavam. But when it comes to the, to, to the possessing of Shimon, the Yavam, to the properties, Maimer did not accomplish anything yet. 
And therefore, it can be that Rabbi Lazar will explain the Machlech is Beshama and Besilol based on how they understand Maimer, when according to Rabbi Lazar, according to Beshama, Maimer should not affect his ownership to her belongings. So therefore, the Gemara says, first of all, Epech, let's do the opposite, that Rabbi Lazar was the one that interpreted like Rava, I'm sorry, like Abaya, which would be better because Abaya did not explain it based on Maimer, or the Ibai is saying, Allah Ilum Lai Tepach, and Amal Rabbi Lazar, Ki Amri Anna, when was I clarifying the opinion of Beishamai about what Maimer does? Was only Benigayat to the Lisagi La Bigayat, El Alabay Nami Chalitza. That I wanted to clarify that even according to Beishamai, that Maimer is considered a Doi Raisa, but Maimer doesn't fully connect the Yavam with, with the Yavama, meaning, that not the way other people understood in Beishamai that once Maimer happened, and if now Shimon doesn't want to be with Rachel, he only has to give her a get, which is the only thing a married man has to give to his wife. That he was trying to emphasize that even according to Beishamai, Maimer is weaker, it's shvacher. And even after Maimer, there's still some type of zika, which means that if they want to separate, both a get is needed and chalitza is needed. However, lachlik ben chasim deloikani, but when it comes to what Maimer will affect Shimon to the property, he never spoke about it. So therefore, Rabbi Lazar can even learn, the way we said before, like Rava, that perhaps Maimer does create enough of a connection according to Beishamai, that at least Shimon should be yachloiku with the family of the deceased Yavama, unlike Beisilol that holds that that she is in full possession and just like a Shemeris Yavim can sell Lechatchila her belongings, if she passes away, only her Yarshim fully inherit those belongings. Amar Rav Papa, the Yuka de Masnis and Kavasi da Abaya, that if you look into the wordings of the Mishnah, it's going to appear that the difference between the Resh and the Sefa is like Abaya, as the Gemara will explain in a moment. However, even though that the question of why did the Mishnah have to give the case of Mesa by the Sefa, that will be a Kasha, which was also the Kasha Anula, which is not the end of the world. And now we're going to clarify what Rav Papa meant. When the Sefa is speaking about Nichsei Meloig, the Mishnah is calling it properties that entered and leave, entered and left with her. Entered when? These wordings should only work when the woman was married. Which is exactly as Abayi was explaining that the safe of the Mishnah was that she inherited those belongings while she was still married to the deceased husband. So the belongings came into the marriage and then when he died it went out. Masha'in can, according to Rava, that both the Reisha and the Seif are speaking about the Shemeris Yavim only getting hold of those properties after she was a Shemeris Yavim, these words don't fit. Is it not? Speaking about a woman who was married, she was still married to the oven, and she inherited then a property. And as we explained yesterday in the previous year, that whenever a woman is Yiddish or gets hold of property during a marriage, they automatically become Nechzim Eloig, not Nechzim Tzim Barzim. So they go into his property, meaning he has the rights of user fruit. And V'yoytzim, it is Shus Habal, when he died, it is Shus Ha'av, to the woman's family. And therefore that fits a lot more according to Abaya's explanation. However, Va'afalgav the Kashya Mesa, the question against Abaya will be just like the Kashya we had against Ula, that Ad Mifligi Bigufala Acha Misa. If the Resha and the Seifa's cases are different because the Resha was that she got it only after she became a Shemar Syafim. And the Seifa speaking about her taking possession of these properties while she was still married which is why the husband and now Shimon, which is in the place of the husband, has more connection to it. So why did the Mishnah have to speak about a case that she died? You could have just said simply, not died, Reuven died. Question is, now that you have these properties, who has the right to the user fruit? And they're also, according to Baye's explanation, Basil and Beishami would argue. So let them argue, Bechayeha. And Vesul Midi, we didn't have to give a case, an ad that she died. So that's a question against Abaya. So for that, the Rava's answer is better, or Rava's answer is better versus Ula. 
Moving on. It says in the Mishnah, Konso, Harehi, what were the words of the Mishnah? That if Shimon now marries her, so the Mishnah said, that that she becomes a full-fledged wife. What does it mean? She becomes a full-fledged wife in the Gemara. This is teaching you that if now Shimon, who did Yibam with Rachel, which was his brother's widow, if now he doesn't want to be with her, to sever the marriage, all he needs to do, according to everyone, is give a get, and not chalitza. And not get the end chalitza, only a get. Aleph. And number two, umach zira, if then Shimon, who's not a kain, would like to remarry her, he is allowed to remarry her. And both of these things are chidushim, and that is the meaning of the Mishnah saying, harei ki ishtay So now the Gemara says, first of all, means if he's a kain, if he's no, 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 God forbid, if Shimon is not a kain. Oh, okay. yeah. So it's a chiddush. Wait, wait. So one at a time. So first of all, Megar the get the Gemara challenges. Why did the Mishnah even have to tell you that he only needs to give her a get? That's Shimon to Rachel after Yibum Avad Pshita. So the Gemara says no, it's not a Pshita. I might have thought Hoyel Viksiv since when the pasuk is speaking about the mitzvah of Yibum and it says Velak Choloy Leisha that the brother Shimon should marry the widow Rachel as his wife and then the Torah adds the words Viyibma and it could have been enough just by writing Velak Choloy Ulakah Choloy Leisha. Why did the Torah add the word V'yibnya? You would have thought that Amar Rachmana, that Hashem is saying, Va'adayin yibumei harishen aleha, that she's still considered a Yivama, even in marriage. And if that would have been the case, yeah. then we might have thought that even after Shimon marries her, there's still, she's still called a Yivama, and he's still called a Yavam. And therefore one might have thought that if they want to sever that marriage, Bechalitza in begetlay, maybe Chalitza is needed, maybe you, you don't yeah. sever it with a get, only Komash Molan, that no, that once you did Yibum, now she's a wife. Then it says the next din, the Gemara answered Rabbi Yisib Rab Chanina. Correct. Umachzira, and if Shimon divorces Rachel, then he can marry her back. Pshita, why not? If he's not a Kayan, any man who divorces his wife, if she did not remarry another man, the original husband can marry her back. So the Gemara answers, I would have thought mitzvah the Ramya Rachmana Olei of the that really don't forget a a, a person's Reuven's wife is usher on his brothers because of the erva of Eishes Ach. Eloma, Hashem gave a mitzvah on Shimon to do Yibum. And he did Yibum. And he did Yibum. And you would think, Hashta, now that he divorced her, so he already did this. So maybe the original Isur of Eishasach comes back, take him a love, Isur Eishasach. So Kamash Malon, that it's not so. That the moment Shimon married her, she's called a wife. And if he divorces her, so if Shimon is not a Kayin, like any man who divorces his wife, if she does not marry another, the original husband can marry her back. I, the Gemara asks, how do you know that? Why don't we say that the original Aishas Ach Isser goes back? So the Gemara answers, since it says in the same Pasuk, Ulukacha Loi Leisha, the Torah could have written Ulukacha Loi Viyibma, the Torah uses the words Leisha to, to teach you Kivin Shalakha Hareya Ki Ishte Lachaldavar. The Torah calls her a wife and not a Yavama. Now we learned before why we also have the words Yavama. But they have to look le'il. Da'af chesamet beis, da'af yutesamet beis. Okay. The final din of the Mishnah was, and we said when we learned it yesterday that we'll clarify this. The last line of the Mishnah was, u'belvad shetehei ksuba al nichse ba'il harishin. That the ksuba of Shimon's marriage is, 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 is guaranteed with the properties from Reuven's marriage. Let's clarify that. Or even better, does Shimon give her a ksuba? Okay. So the Gemara says, first of all, my tama. And one thing, to, we have to make one thing clearly, that when Shimon does Yibum with Rachel, just like any husband is Mechoyev, Mido Airaisa, to support his wife, She'er Ksus and Aina, and some of that is written in the Ksuba, there's no doubt that the Yavam is Mechoyev to, to support his wife, etc., just like any other husband is Mechoyev to his wife. This is not the question. Here we're only speaking about the mana, the amount of money that is given to a woman if she gets divorced. Now, or if she becomes a widow. She became a widow from Reuven. 
Shimon's marriage to her is not a new marriage. So if she's going to get chalitza, because he's just doing yibum in the place of his brother. If he's going to... Well, uh, if Shimon will do chalitza, then she collects the ksuba money from the nechassim of Reuven. But if now Shimon does yibum, so that's what the Mishnah is telling you, that the ksuba money that Shimon will have to give her if he divorces her or if he dies before her, that money should come from the property of Reuven. And not from his own property. Why? My Tama, because Isha Hiknulaimin Ashamayim. It wasn't he who chose to marry her, which is why a normally a husband is Mukhoyev to compensate her if he divorces her or if he dies, being that he only fulfilled an obligation. And also don't forget that Shimon inherits, as we'll see later, I think in Daflemem, that Shimon will be Yoidish, the property of Reuven. So it makes sense that the Ksuba money should come to her if Shimon divorces her. But it comes of the properties from Reuven. Now, however, one thing is clear. If Reuven did not leave property from which she can collect her ksuba, if she, if she gets divorced from Shimon or widowed from Shimon, then for sure, there's no doubt she will get her ksuba money. Why? The whole reason why we have a ksuba is because don't forget that before the cherem de Rabbeinu Gershon, a man was allowed to divorce his wife against her will, Baal Karcha. So the only thing stopping a person when he got angry and maybe he can be talked down is by making it financially pricey for him to divorce his wife. So that reason is needed, which is why when Shimon will divorce her, if Shimon will divorce her, Shimon will be mechoyf to pay her the ksuba money. The only question is from where? And again, as we'll see, Shimon gets all of Reuven's property. So it makes sense, during the marriage, Shimon is mechoyf to support her. If Shimon divorces her, or if Shimon dies from her, she will get her ksuba money. But if Reuven left property, it will go off that property. The reason he gives it is because he can live in a shrine. The reason why he doesn't have to give it from his property is because... Correct. But he has the bechira to do chalitza. But if he does yibum, he gets the properties of Reuven. So the, the, why is it what, considered that he's the one being coined? He is being coined, but I'm wording it that way. He, he's getting also with that Reuven's property. She's guaranteed. She's not losing anything. It makes so much sense. She's going to get the ksuba money, like the so Gemara the says. Since Yibo means that he's continuing the marriage of his brother, which is why he doesn't give her kedushin. Midaraisa, he just has a relation with her, so he's continuing the ksuba obligation. Everything is continuing. Mishnah, mitzvah begadol liabim. We had this before in the Gemara, quoting this Mishnah, that lechatchila the mitzvah of yibum or chalitza is on the eldest of the brothers. However, lo yiratza, if he doesn't want, and we'll have in the Gemara, Machlekes Amirayim, is it that he doesn't want to do yibum nor chalitza, or lo yiratza means he just doesn't want to do yibum. And we'll clarify that in the beginning of the Gemara. So that in his Mahal Chamakala Achim, you go around to all the brothers. And if Leiratsu, and if none of the brothers wanted to do Yibum again or Chalitza, depending on the Machlika Samirayim, so then says the Mishnah, you go back to the eldest of the brothers, and the base then tells him, listen, Alecha Mitzvah, and choose, Oy Chalitz, Oy Yabim, but you, the older brother, you have to do one or the other. Lahair, that the Mishnah said the word Chalitz before Yabim. And we're going to learn later, and we had it before, which we'll discuss which one comes first. Is it Yibum, ideal, or maybe now Chalitza is even before Yibum, and we'll get to that soon. Now, Tala B'Katan, as Rashi explains, that Katan here doesn't mean the younger brothers. Here the word Katan means that there is one of the brothers who is a Katan, who is a halachic minor, which means he's not yet Bar Mitzvah. And the older brother or the older brothers are saying, no, the Katan will be the one doing Yibum with her, or doing Yibum or Chalitza with her. And therefore they are asking for her to wait for him to become an adult. Achi Yagdil, they're saying, wait, or Oi Begadl, going back, Gadl here doesn't mean over by mitzvah. Here Gadl means that the brothers who are here are saying the mitzvah is with the eldest brother, and he is overseas, so why not wait, Achi Yavei, Mimidina Sayam? 
or if there is from the brothers a chedesh, a deaf mute, or a shaita, someone who's mentally incompetent. And the ones who are competent are suggesting, why don't you wait for him? Now, many of the Rishonim learn, why don't you wait for him to get better? And when he'll get better, he'll do Yibum. Other people hold that even a deaf mute or a shaita could do Yibum or Chalitza. But in any event, the Mishnah says, Ein shaymim loy. That we never make her wait. You tell whoever is present, Olecha mitzvah, oi chaloitz, oi yabim. Okay, no, it's, we don't delay it. Now, going back to the Gemara, the Gemara begins clarifying the Mishnah. It may be learned that Bias Katan, if you have to choose between one of the younger brothers doing Yibum versus the, el, the older brother, the eldest of the brothers doing Chalitza, which one is more important than the other? No, it's, mitzvah begadal is only for Yibum. But if the gadol is going to do chalitza, but a, a younger brother says, no, 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 I'll do yibum. So do you say, let the younger brother do yibum? Or not? Or do we say that the mitzvah is on the eldest brother to do either yibum or chalitza? It's only if he's doing nothing that you go to the younger brothers. So on this, you have a machlek is between Abi Yechen and Abi Yeshua ben Levi. Chad Omar Bias Katan Adifa. Opinion number one. And opinion number two is that the idea of mitzvah begadol goes even on chalitza. So if the eldest brother is saying, I'm going to do chalitza, we do that rather than a younger brother doing gibum. Says the Gemara, Why? Because mitzvah is b'yibum. And at least he's trying to do yibum. Uman, the Amr Chalitza has got a lot of And the reason for the second opinion that anything from the older brother is better than anything from any of the younger brothers is because Bemakim Gadol, Bias Katan Laf Klumi. Wow. That when the older brother, we learned that before from the words Vahaya Habachar, is assuming the mitzvah of Yibum or Chalitza, whichever one he will do, is better than anything else that will be done from the younger brothers and Mamash Lafkobi. Okay, Tanan, and there, B is correct. So Tanan, the Gemara is going to challenge the second opinion. The second opinion is that Chalitza Gadol from our Mishnah, challenging Akasha. Tanan will learn that our Mishnah that Lairatza, that if the other, if the elders doesn't want, then Machzidim al Kala Achim, then the Basin asks the other brothers, the younger brothers. So the Gemara says, my love does the Mishnah not mean that the older brother didn't want to do Yibum. Even if he agreed to do Chalitza. And nevertheless, the Mishnah says, Mahal chametzim ha'achim, so l'chay reshma mino bi'as katan adifa. Question. Answers the Gemara, Loi. how do you know that? That the Mishnah is meaning that l'iratza not l'achlitz and not liabing. That's why the Mishnah said you go to the younger brothers. But if the older brother would want to do even Chalitza, that's the second opinion. Chalitza's Gadol is better than Bias Katan. Now the Gemara says, if that's the case, now it's a, a counter question, then the, the Mishnah to be symmetric, if the Mishnah in the nation means the older brother didn't want to do nothing, not even Manat Chalitza, so then you have to continue reading the Mishnah following the same pattern. The Kavasa, when the Mishnah later says, when it's speaking about the younger brothers, and then the Mishnah says, and they also don't want to do, so what must it mean by them? The same thing it meant before. That if the younger brothers did not want to do, not Chalitza, and not Yibu. So now the Gemara is asking, that why does the Mishnah say that you go back to the older one? If the Mishnah is addressing a case where no one wants to do anything, which means Basin has to force someone to do something, why are we troubling the Beisden to call the, old, the older brother back? They already went to all the brothers. And initially, all of the brothers told the Beisden, from the eldest to the youngest, leave me alone. So once they have to start forcing, let them force the person who's in front of them. In other words, it's going to have to be... She considered No, not yet. If no one does anything, she'll be considered an Aguna. Beisden won't allow her to get there. Elama that we have to force some of the brothers. So if the Basin is already standing now with the youngest, because they went from the oldest to the youngest, wow. is wow. let them already force the youngest. So they were saying, that's not a kasha. 
The counter thing about it? No, no, no. Even the mitzvah or lay the day ramya. Since the ideal mitzvah is on the eldest brother, yes, they go back. Lidi day kaifinon. I based and has to go through more trouble. Well, we're doing the mitzvah the best way possible. Okay, right. Now, Tanan, if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be now a kasha, if I care, against the first opinion. The first opinion that says that Bias cotton is better than Chalitza's Gadol. It says in our Mishnah Tolo cotton that if they're trying to delay it, by the brothers are saying, now let them, our minor nine year old, he'll do it. Achi Yagdil ain't Shemimli. So now the Gemara says, one second, the Bias cotton Adifa, if Bias cotton is better than Chalitza's Gadol, am I ain't Shemimli? Ninta, then Taka let her wait. Because Dilma Gadil Umiyapi. The older brothers, if they'll do anything, they're going to do Chalitza. So why don't you wait for the possibility that the cotton will do Yibum? So the Gemara says, that's not a question. Why not? Because even if you will assume, let's say, Ogishlag in the first opinion, the second opinion is right. But still, what is the Mishnah saying? That if Ubi Gadil, everyone agrees that the mitzvah is on the Gadil. And if the eldest brother is traveling, and the, and the middle brothers are telling Bezan, no, no, one second. Our older brother is traveling, let her wait. The Mishnah also said, Why not? Amai, Nintar, let us wait. Dilma Asi, Umiyabim, it's better to change the Girsa. Or maybe also at least Chalitza. Elamai, you see, from, you see from the Mishnah, that the reason why you don't wait is not because that if, if we would have waited anyways, the ideal won't happen. Lav Dafka. In that case, when the older brother is traveling, perhaps waiting, him coming back, he'll do yibum. The ideal will happen. We don't wait. There's another din. Elama, kol shayhuye mitzvah, lo shahinan. We don't wait. If the gadol is not here, whoever is here should do yibum or chalitza, turning the page. So therefore, that answers in the reish of the Mishnah. And therefore, we didn't slug up any of the sites. This is one version of the machlekes between the first and the second Tamayra, whether Bias Godel, Bias Cotton, and Halitza's Godel, which one is better than the other? Is the Amri, other people hold that a whole different version of this argument, that the Bia Kula Amuloi Pligi, everyone agrees that if you have to choose between Bias Cotton and Halitza's Godel, Bias Cotton is better. Ki Pligi, when did they argue? If Yibum is not happening by any of the brothers, only Chalitza will happen. Is it still ideal for her to get Chalitza from the oldest brother? That the Chalitza's cotton, that's where the argument is. One opinion holds Chalitza's cotton, Chalitza's godl pligi. But Rabbi Yechon Rabbi Shobin Levi, that the first opinion will be that even if it's only going to be a Chalitza case, still it's better for her to get Chalitza from the older brother. Chalitza's God the Ladifa, and Vachad Omar, the second opinion is that Ki Haddadi Ninu. Yibum is Taka Begadu. And more than that, if the older brother wants to do Chalitza and a younger brother wants to do Yibum, the mitzvah is Lachatchila Yibum. But if it's only going to be Chalitza, then it doesn't make a difference from whom she gets Chalitza. Man, the Omar, Chalitza's God the Ladifa, because mitzvah is Begadu. And the second opinion will hold, ki yominin in mitzvah begadol, only when it comes to the mitzvah of yibum. Avali in chalitza, if all of the brothers chose not to do yibum, one of them needs to do chalitza, is kahadad ininhu, whichever one does it is just as good as any other one, you don't have to go to the oldest brother. So now, according to this is the Amri on the argument, the Gemara now is going to challenge the second opinion that Ki Hadadininhu from our Mishnah. Tanan, we learned in our Mishnah, Lai Ratsu, that if none of the brothers wanted, you go back to, eighth, you go back to the oldest brother. So my love, Luchayda, is the Mishnah not speaking about that the brothers don't want to do Yibum. Right? They only want to do Chalitza. And nevertheless, the Mishnah says that if everyone is saying, I don't want to do Yibum, I just want to do Chalitza, Chayzer makes the Godel. Still, you go back to the oldest brother. So, Lo Chayzer Shmami Nei Chalitza's Godel Adifa, Kasha against the second opinion. That Loi Ratzu, Loi Lach, Loi Tzvi, Loi Liyabim. That the Mishnah is speaking about a case that none of the brothers want to do anything. Again, and Bezdan has to force. So now the Gemara counters, it doesn't make sense. Because the Kavasi Gabi Godol, because if the Mishnah is speaking about the younger brothers don't want to do anything, it means the older brother also didn't want to do anything. Loi not to do Chalitza, not to do Yibum. 
So again, on my chayzer and etzel gadol, why do we go back to the oldest brother? Why don't we force the, the people who are in front of Beisdin? Again, Neymar gives the same answer, not true. Since no one wants to do anything, right? Even the mitzvah, a lady, they ram yo, lady, they kaifin on. Vaiter Toshima, Kasha against the first opinion, it says in the Mishnah Talabagadol that if they say, let the older brother who's not here, let's wait until he returns. So the Mishnah Paskins, you don't listen. Now, the is, Salka Daita, Chalitza's Gadol Adifa, if even Chalitza from the older brother is better than the younger brother, why don't why don't they wait? Amayin Shoimim Loi, Nintar, let us wait, Dilma Asi Vichalitz. Counters the Gemara, the same answer as before, but in reverse. Ulitai meich. So you're saying is a haraya that they're equal. Even if Chalitza is equal, why did we learn in the Midat be cotton at Chiago? Ain't Shoimim Loi. Amai, why don't we wait for the cotton? Maybe he'll get older and he'll do Yibum. And everyone agrees, according to this, is the Amri that Bias cotton is better than Chalitza's God. Ella, you don't wait, not because one thing is better or worse, because the Chachamim don't want her to wait. Like you said in Aguna. Ella, Kol Shaihuye Mitzvah Loi Shohinon. And therefore, that answers. No kasha, no proof, the machleka stands. Moving on. All right? We're learning about chalitza and yibum. And the way it came out, the unspoken in inference from the whole sugya, was that yibum is better than chalitza. The question is, is the mitzvah bagadol also by chalitza or not? But yibum is before chalitza. Now, here we will quote the Tanan Hasam. Write the Mishnah in Ksubis, the Mishnah in Bechayrais, something that we quoted in the beginning of the Mesech, I think it was all the way in Dav Gimel or in Dav Dalit, the opinion of Abba Shol. And let's read it. It says, Mitzvahs Yibum Koydemes Le Mitzvahs Chalitza. This is even Abba Shol. That ideally, Mido Eiraisa, Yibum, it's clear so from the words in the Chumash. Yibum was the ideal. Chalitza is secondary. However, that was only Bereshoina. That was only in the good old days. Shehoyu mischavenim l'shem shamayim. When the Yavam and the Yavama were doing it l'shem mitzvah. That's when Yibum is before Chalitza. But Achshav, but now, imagine, now already in the times of the Mishnah, times of Bayesheni, she'ein mischavenim l'shem shamayim. That they're not doing it purely for the mitzvah. Shimon might also do it because he likes her. Because she's beautiful, because he wants to be a married man, or any other reason that's not purely l'shem mitzvah yibum. Amru we say now mitzvah chalitza is before mitzvah yibum, and as we'll see later, this is the opinion of Abishol. Amar Rav now comes along Rav the Amoira, and we'll learn this Gemara the way Rashi learns it. Tosfos learns it differently, but we'll follow Shitas Rashi that ve'ain kaifin. Even though we take a hold that chalitza is better than yibum, but we don't force chalitza. Which means that if a man comes to Beisdin and he says, I want to do yibum, we allow him to do yibum. We notify him. Yibum has to be l'shem mitzvah. But if he says, I'm doing it l'shem mitzvah. And just to remind ourselves that when we learned, I think it was in Dav Gimel, we quoted the Noidid Behoda, which wrote a tshuva, and he explained that even according to Abba Shol, that holds that if it's not done l'shem mitzvah, it's almost like an erva. That's only if it was done only not l'shem mitzvah. But if it is something that we all can relate to, if a person likes Shimon likes Rachel, but he's aware that it's a mitzvah and he values mitzvahs, so he says it's great. I'm going to do yibum and I'm doing a mitzvah. It's, if it's also l'shem mitzvah, that's okay. In other words, it's not an erva. The children are not mamzedim. There's actually a machlek as between the machaber and the ramo. Regarding if a person wants to do Yibum, there's din of Ein Kaifen. I think that Amos says you force Chalitza. And the Machaber says. Well, the bottom line is, is that I think, if I'm not mistaken, that Amos says that today you only do Chalitza, you don't allow Yibum. And uh, the Machaber, by this far, then they, they, if they want to do Yibum, if they want to do Yibum, then they can do Yibum. Kiyosa Lekame Derav. Amar Lohu, and the Gemara backs it up, that one time, let's say, a Shimon and a Rachel came in front of Rav. So Rav told them, I bo is chalitz, if you want to chalitza. He said that first, taka like Abishol, and I bo ye yabim. 
And if you want, you can also do Yibum. In other words, it's completely up to you. And how do we see that from? Because it says in the Pasuk, that if the man doesn't want to do Yibum, then he does Chalitza. Which means, but if he wants, in other words, he, makes, he, he, he does the choice. Just important to point out that, uh, obviously, we learned this before, that she has to agree. Even though Midor Raisa, if the act of Yibum was done against her will, the Yibum is a Yibum, but she has to agree. And we don't muzzle her, so to say, like we learned before, if there's a Mukashchin, which is just an example of the husband is very unattractive, or for whatever reason, if he's unattractive for her, then she also has to choose to do Yibum. Okay. Now the Gemara says, Af Rav Yehuda, the Amr Rav Yehuda also holds, in Kaifin. Again, according to Shitas Rashi, Ein Koifin means that Abba Shaul is right, Chalitza is ideal, but you don't force Chalitza. How do we know that? Me the asking of Yehuda begita the Chalitza. We know this from the text that Rav Yehuda is based and wrote, giving it to a Chalutza. Just like we mentioned this many times, the get document itself is not given to a divorced woman. The based and writes her a document that she should have proof that in this and this day, her husband gave her a get. A woman who undergoes chalitza gets a document. And from the nusach that we're going to quote now, that was written in Rav Yehuda's document, we see that he did not prohibit Yibum. What, what does it say in his uh, Gita de Chalitza? He writes, Ech is bar ploini, that so and so the woman, the Yavama, Akrivat, she brought Yas ploini Yavama. She brought so and so the Yavam. Again, ideally the Gadol, but if not, one of the brothers. And kad, Kadmona Lebedin in front of our basin. And then Rav Yehuda wrote, da'inhu. And we recognized that the Achuya, the Misna Ma'aboninhu, that the Yavam that she brought to Beisden is a paternal brother from the dead one, from, the, from her deceased husband. Well, there has to be a notification. How do you know that the man was in court? How do you know he's the Yavim? So they need to recognize it. The Gemara later is going to clarify that you have to have two Adim, or maybe you don't need two Adim. We'll get to that soon. All this is in the document. And the Omni lay, and we the Beisden told him, it's obviously Yavim Yavim. If you want to do Yibum, see clear, they told him that. You can do Yibum. And the Eloi, and if you do not want to do Yibum, then Atla, extend, Raglech Diyamino, your right foot, and the Itla Ragla Diyamino, and he extended his right foot. Ushras Sanei Ma'al Ragloi, and she untied his shoe from his foot. And the Yarkas Ba'anpoye Roika de Meschazi Lebedino Ha'alaro, and she spit it out spittle that was visible to the basin on the ground in front of him. And now the Gemara adds, and I want you to know that in the, in the document of Rafchia Bar Avya, they added that in Rabbi Yehuda's document it says, Va'akrinu, and then both of them were told to read, Madakosav Besefer Oiraisa de Moisha, the psukim that are written in the Chumash, that she says, that he says, we all know that that reading was done, but they wrote it into that Shtar Chalitza. End of the document, Raya, that you give the option. Now the Gemara wants to clarify when it says in the document, Ve'ash Timoidan Inu, that we recognize that the brother is a brother. So on this plea about Ravachim and Ravino, one of them holds Be'edim, that the Be'ezim need to get Edim, that testify that he is the brother of the, of, of the, of the deceased man. And Vachad Omar, another Ramayda held, that even a relative who's normally not a kosher witness, and even a woman who's normally not a kosher witness, are believed to say that Shimon is the brother to the Uven. There's a rule that it's, that's called Milsa da Avida Ligaluya Lemishakri Ba Inshi, being that everyone knows who's whose brother, based in, if they're not aware, they don't have to have a real kosher set of witness. And the Gemara says, Vilchasa, and the Halakha Taka is that Galuye Milsa Ba'almuhu, that this recognizing is called a Gili Milsa. It's only something that has to be clarified. In other words, it's not Mamash Adin of Edim. Va'afilu Karev, Va'afilu Isha. And therefore, even a non relative, even a relative, and even a woman can be kosher. 
but a shino we learned in a Mishnah Shaho you must have an English mitzvah the Shoy Lama Shay Mitzvah that they intended to do a Lashay Mitzvah so then mitzvahs yibum kodemes le mitzvahs chalitza. Then ideally, even according to Abba Shol, yibum is before chalitza. But va'achshav she'ein mischavn l'shem mitzvah. Amru they said the rabbi says mitzvahs chalitza kodemes le mitzvahs yibum that it's better to do chalitza before yibum. That's the end of the mission. Amar Rami Bar Chama Amar Rabbi Yitzchak. Right? They never quoted these words very often. So Rami Bar Chama said in the name of Rabbi Yitzchak. That Chazru Leimar Mitzvahs Yibum Kedemus Lemitzvahs Chalitza. That afterwards, apparently, something changed, and the Chachamim went back to how it used to be by suggesting Yibum before Chalitza. So Amar Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak Achshir Dari Bitmiya. What? The generations get better. Normally, when the generations go on, their spiritual standing gets lower. So if we started saying that originally people did everything with Shem Shemayim, but then they started to do it also Shalai Lishma, so Chalitza comes first, and Rabbi Bar Chama adds, but now it goes back to the way it used to be, is it because we got better? So the Mar says, no. It's not because Rami Bar Chama felt that people now are doing things more Lashem Shemayim. But Me'ekara, originally he passed in like Abashol. And later, the rabbis chose to paskin like the Rachachamim, who hold that even if you don't do it L'Shem Mitzvah, you're getting the Mitzvah. And if you're getting the Mitzvah regardless, your Kavana, in the trade it comes out clearly, ideal Yibum, and if not, do Chalitza. The Tanya, Abashol Oimer, Abashol is the one that says that HaKoyim is even to L'Shem Noi, if the person is only doing it because he finds her beautiful, or Ulushum issues because he wants to have the status of a married man, or Ulushum Dover Acher, or for any other reason. Aside of doing it because it's a mitzvah, then Ki Ilui Pegeya Be'erva. Then it's considered as if, God forbid, he married an Erva, which is his brother's wife. And therefore, V'Karev Ani Be'enai, Abashol says, I'm almost going to say that the child that is born is Mama Shamamzer. Imagine. The Chachamim says, it says, Yuvama Yavoy Oleha. And the Torah means to say with that, Mikol Makayim, no matter what the Kavana was, the mitzvah happens. And Rami Bar Chama Paskins, like the Chachamim, which is now, according to him, Yibam comes before Chalitz. Now the Gemara asks, Man Tanu Who's going to be the author of the following brisa? And it's a very short brisa. It says Yivama Yavoy Aleha. So the brisa quotes the pasuk, and the brisa adds the words Mitzvah. Shabbat Chilon. Then the brisa clarifies that originally, originally meaning before Reuven married Rachel. So what was the relationship between Rachel and Shimon? There was no relationship. Shimon was single, Rachel was, sing was single, two Jewish people. If Shimon would have wanted, he could marry her. If not, he doesn't have to marry her. But now that Reuven, Shimon's brother, married Rachel, is Nesra. Now Rachel cannot be with Shimon because she's called an anxious Ach. But now that Reuven died childless, now she returns to her original Heter. So the Braisa says, You would think that she goes back to be just the way she was before Reuven married her? So that's the meaning of the Braisa. Talmud Leimer, Yavama Yavi Oleha, Mitzvah. Mitzvah means that he cannot choose to marry her. It's a mitzvah for him to marry her. So Mantana, what is the meaning of the word mitzvah and who's the author of this Braisa? Amir Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Abdimi, Abushol He. This Braisa is authored by Abushol, Vahachi Ka'amar, and this is the meaning of the Braisa. Yavam Yom Yileo, Mitzvah. Shebet Chila, Ha'isa Allah Bechlal Heter. Before Reuven married Rachel, if Shimon would have married Rachel, it doesn't matter what his kavana is. Ratza, if his intent is because, I want to marry her because she's beautiful, it's good, kind so. If he wants to be a married man and just for that he wants to get married, good. Koinsa. However, once Reuven married her, now she's an Eishas Ach, Nesra, he can never be with her. Eishas Ach. But if Reuven dies childless, so now she's again permissible on Shimon. 
So yochel tachzer leteiroi rishon. So therefore, the Brisa says you might think that the kavana of Shimon is irrelevant. So therefore, Talmud Lemer Yevama Yavai Oleha, that he can only be with her for the mitzvah of Yevama Yavai Oleha. In other words, the author of the Brisa saying mitzvah is to exclude the possibility of a different kavana. Mitzvah, it has to be le kavanas yibum. That is the interpretation of Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Avdimi. Comes along Rav and Rav says that this Brisa can even be offered by the Rabbanan. So what's the back and forth? That the Braisa has to say that it's a mitzvah. Don't forget, according to the Chachamim, we don't care what his kavana is. So the Amr, this is the way we'll interpret the Braisa. That Yevam Yavi Yaleo mitzvah. Shebet Chilo Haisa Bechlal Heten. Originally, before Reuven married Rachel, Rachel was a single woman, unrelated to this family. Shimon could have married her. Ratzah Kainsa, if he wants, he could marry her. If he wants, he doesn't have to marry her. Then Reuven marries her. The moment Reuven marries Rachel Nesro, Shimon can never be with her, Eishas Ach. Now that Reuven died childless, Chazra Vohutra, she again becomes permissible on Shimon. So here the Braiser writes, Yochel Tachsen Leteir Harishain. You might think that Shimon's relationship with Rachel is the way it used to be. How was it? If he wants, he could marry her. If he wants, he doesn't have to marry her. So one second. So the Gemara asks, Rotza Eino Konsa. How can the Braisa even suggest that? Ho agido bei. There is the bond, there is the zika. What bichdi teipoik? Will it go away without anything? So the Gemara clarifies. No, Ela you would have thought that if Shimon wants, he can marry her. If Shimon wants, he can do chalitza with her. In other words, either options are equally good. So the Chachamim say, no, Yivama Yavay Aleha, that it's better to do Yibum than chalitza. We'll stop over here.